Hi, my name is Bethany Garriman. I'm the program director here at MUD, and we're here tonight with Women's Voices for the Earth to present a workshop on green cleaning products and how you can make them for yourself so you don't have to buy them anymore and you don't have to worry about what's in them. Um, and if you're interested in any other workshops here at MUD or our other programs like the Tool Library or Truck Share, you can contact us by calling the office at 721-7513 or you can find us online at www.mudproject.org. Thanks for joining us. All right. So WEAVE is um, a national organization now. We actually were founded here in Missoula in 1995, and this is also our 15th anniversary this year, which is very exciting. And speaking of Sandra Steingraber, I don't know what all your plans are um, next Friday, but she is coming um, to, premiere her, um, to premiere Living Downstream. Um, and this is the book that she wrote, I think, in 1998. Is that the one that you guys just read? Yeah. Um, and the second edition, which is extensively rewritten, is actually coming out three days before our event, and we're going to have it there, which is amazing. So it'll be all updated and everything. Um, and so that'll be at the Wilma at 7 o'clock on Friday, next Friday. And you guys can come hear Sandra speak and see this amazing film. We got to screen it last week, and it is really, really good. It's phenomenal. And it's really short, so like 80 minutes maybe. So um, totally worth it on a Friday night, a first Friday. Um, so we were founded in 1995 as a national organization. And um, we were kind of founded in response to this idea that um, environmentalism kind of had a very um, conservation, wildlife, um, sort of traditional environmentalism um, definition. And it was sort of hard for um, women to find a voice in that movement because it had traditionally also been founded by men. Um, and our founder, do you guys, have you guys heard of Bryony Schwann? She works with biomimicry now, amazing woman. And she actually founded Weave while she was finishing her thesis at EVST in environmental studies here, um, which is, and she had a full-time job and she was founding Weave. She's finishing her master's was pretty phenomenal. And um, she actually has this um, story that she has told before and it's in um, a book too that I also should have brought. I'm realizing all these resources that I should have brought, but I'll just direct you all to our website where you can find them all, um, where she talks about why she ended up founding Weave. And um, she was at a, um, an environmental meeting, you know, very, I think, I don't know if she actually mentions it, but I think it was, you know, Sierra Club, one of those type of um, environmental meetings, and there was a lot of table thumping, and um, they were talking about some conservation thing. There were women in the room, and um, she noticed the women leave kind of one by one, and um, she heads out into the lobby, and they're all sort of standing there like, this is bizarre, like we can't, you know, feel like we're not identifying with this, we can't. Every time they would start to talk, they would get cut off, and um, Brandy said she went back in the room and she was like, what can I do? I want to do something, give me a task. And the guy actually looked at her and said, you can bring the tea and cookies to the next meeting. Yeah, in the 90s, I mean. <laughs> and so that's why she was like, well, I want to find an environmental issue that really resonates with women. Um, and that issue tends to be problems in our own backyard, you know? Um, and this is, I think, maybe true, not just of women. I think this is really true of everyone, that you resonate more with things that are happening in your own life, in your own backyard, I think it's harder to, you know, identify with blue whales, <laughs> for example, you know, it's harder to make that connection. Um, and so we started out working on, um, you know, incinerator issues of pollution problems because women um, are more affected by toxic chemicals. Um, and that can be um, any sort, and as is the environment, obviously. So, and there's a connection between environmental health and our health. Um, and women are also the first environment for the next generation. Um, and so that's really, I think, where the issue of toxic chemicals comes from. Um, so women are more affected by toxic chemicals, one, um, because we have more fat than men and toxic chemicals build up in our fat. Um, another is that because we're the next environment for the next generation, we can pass those chemicals on to um, our children and our infants in the placenta and through breastfeeding. And then the last one is because women tend to spend more time in the home. You know, statistically that just is still true. And so we are still exposed to whatever chemicals are used in the home. Um, and air quality in homes is actually consistently worse than it is outside still. Um, I'm totally nervous with the camera on me. <laughs> Let me just drink my tea here. Um, um, and another reason is that women are still doing over 70% of the house cleaning in the average home. Women use far more personal care products a day than do men. I mean, think about your personal care product routine when you get up, and I mean, men think about it too. The soaps that we use, the lotion that we use, our deodorant, hair gel, I mean, any sort of foundation, moisturizer, any sort of makeup, 
nail polish, hairspray. I mean, it's just insane. So we use an extreme amount of um, chemicals in our daily life. Um, and so the other reason that this is of concern is that there are tens of thousands of chemicals on the marketplace today, and they're not required to be tested at all for their impact on human health, which is shocking because most people think, you know, when you go into a grocery store and you pick up a product, whether it's a cleaning product, a personal care product, whatever it is, you assume that somebody has tested that, that it's there because it's safe for you. Either the manufacturer tested it or the government required it to be tested, but it's not true, which is just shocking. Um, and so uh, and the other problem, specifically with cleaning products, is that they're not required to be listed on the product label, which, you know, if you think about food, that's required down to every single ingredient that is in that piece of food has to be listed on the product label. Personal care products from makeup to deodorant to shampoo has to be listed on the label. Some of that is left out right now, like dyes, fragrances, and preservatives, but for the most part, has to be listed. Cleaning products, no. So you go to a store, you look at a cleaning product, you have no idea what is in that product. You have no idea what its impact could be to your human health. No idea. Let alone that, you don't know what chemicals are in that product that will react with every single other chemical that you are using every day that you don't know about. So there's, just, there's a lot to think about, and we've, whew, we, um, there's some, I get really fired up about this because uh, I really love Weave and what we do, and this is one of our um, biggest campaigns. It's been really fun, and we're seeing a lot of change with it. It's super cool. Um, and so at Weave, we created the Green Cleaning Party Kit not to be so overwhelming because everything I just told you is super <laughs> overwhelming, you know? Like, well, how do I know what chemicals I'm using? How do I know what to use, what's safe, what's good? And so we started the Green Cleaning Party Kit to give people a tool to kind of overcome that. Something you, some step you can take in your personal life to protect yourself, your home, your family, um, your loved ones. So let me hand out these. Are, do you guys have recipe cards? These are um, from the Green Cleaning Party Kit. And I didn't actually bring a full kit because I figured that you guys are getting um, the best of the kit. One. One's good. So this we kind of launched in response to our Green Cleaning Party Kit, um, that report that's over there on the table, Household Hazards, was um, we released that, and with that we launched, it was really our first big national campaign. Um, and you know, in just two years we've become a leader in this um, area, which is awesome. And um, so that report identified chemicals of concern, um, and there was such an amazing response to that. There were so many women saying, well, what are we supposed to do that then we created the Green Cleaning Party Kit. And the Party Kit has these recipes, um, and because we're a national organization and we don't have you know, satellite offices anywhere, we don't have chapters, it's something that a tool that women can take into their own spheres of influence, you know, whether it's your friends, your book club, you know, anything else you, you feel like where you can bring people together and educate them, you can become a leader in your own sphere of influence, take that step, educate others. And it's kind of like a snowball effect where then those people go out and tell this many more people and this many more people. And so we can reach so many more people this way than we can, you know, simply with I don't know if we had chapters who were, I don't know, going out and organizing their own green cleaning parties. The um, snowball effect has been incredibly effective. And because of this, this is the reason that SC Johnson has actually started disclosing their ingredients on their website. They were the first company to do that. Um, and they uh, just sent us a press release. They're going to also do it and launch their website in Spanish. And they're the only company to actually do that. But this has been a snowball effect and that now almost all of the major companies are starting to disclose ingredients on their websites. This is huge, huge. This has never happened before. And it happened really, really quickly, which is amazing. And these green cleaning parties, every company representative we've talked to has said that this is one of the reasons. Because there are so many women who are calling for safer cleaners and who are you know, making their own instead of buying these companies' cleaners. Um, so it's had a really a two-pronged effect where you can take a personal step and then you also take a corporate step or a political step and you can make your voice heard in a couple different ways. So it's really cool. And um, we're gonna make a couple of these tonight. Um, and the reason that, um, th the other reason, I guess, that we decided to make these is because they're effective. I mean, these are, you know, the ingredients that have been around forever. This is what all of our grandparents used to clean. Um, and they also will do what a commercial cleaner would do. Maybe you'll need a little more elbow grease, but that's just because you're not using bleach, for example. You're using baking soda, and, you know, it just takes a little longer to set on your enamel, you know. And so the other great thing about this is that it also is natural, uh, they also have natural disinfecting powers. So you can use one cleaner, this all-purpose cleaner, that is literally vinegar, essential oil, and water, and it will clean and it will disinfect for you. And it's not toxic, you can eat it, which is amazing. So um, that's the thing about all of these products too, is that, <laughs> I could go off on a tangent here, but you know, if, um, 
For example, you get your hands on a commercial cleaning product or say your child happens to drink something, you can't look on the product label and see you know, what it was. And then your doctor actually has to call the company and then fill out a response form or a release form. It will take literally hours for you to find out what is in that product if they'll tell you it all. And so if this happens, you know exactly what's in it. You know that it probably isn't going to affect them um, because you can eat this stuff. So um, another benefit is that it's just safe kind of all around, not only for um, long-term effects, but very short-term effects as well. So um, with that, I think I can uh, stop talking and we can start making cleaning products and you guys can just uh, ask me as we go along. Um, so we're going to make the creamy soft scrub and the all-purpose spray because they're my favorites. And they're the ones that you can use for everything. And then you guys can just keep those recipes and make your own whenever you feel like it, um, the rest of those. And so how many of you guys brought jars and spray bottles? Okay. Okay, so maybe we'll just start with the creamy soft scrub. So uh, you'll need your jar and uh, come on up. Oh, by the way, you know the other thing that we could use is um, a measuring cup. So we'll bring your containers, and if you need a container, I bet Bethann has something we can use. It's like maybe measuring everything? Um, uh, yeah. I mean, we could make do with just one. Awesome. So did you guys have your recipe card? Yeah. This is a pretty self-explanatory. <laughs> you guys have that, um, you guys promoted that book more than a pretty favorite. Yeah, thing. that's what the book I was saying that Brian was what I should have brought. Because okay. we have a bunch of them. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. I got those for like, my sisters for Christmas. Oh, you did? That's year. awesome. That's yeah. great. Yeah, that tends to be one of those that generally scares the hell out of people where they're like, oh my god, now what do I do? Yeah. And I don't think there's that many solutions in the book, which is why then you have to go to like the Breast Cancer Fund website and our yeah. website and find out what you're supposed to do. And then, so, the Environmental Working Group website too, maybe have mm -hmm, They host the Skin Deep database, yeah. Um, exactly, yeah. it's First. scary. And fragrance actually are the big ones that... um. They have phthalates and um, synthetic musks and stuff like that, and um, those are the ones that are, you know, we're really concerned about because, yeah, they're hormone disruptors, they cause reproductive problems, I mean, and the thing about most chemicals, if they have been tested for their impact on human health, they've been tested for long-term impacts on men, or I'm sorry, acute impacts on men. Hmm. Whereas women and children are the most vulnerable populations. You know, children pound by pound drink more water, eat more food, drink, breathe more air than we do. They're crawling on the floor and putting whatever, you know, cleaning products are in there in their mouths. Um, their immune systems aren't fully developed until they're much older. And so that's why with legislation that we're working on now to actually reform the, um, the chemicals policy, which doesn't require testing right now, will require testing of chemicals on the most vulnerable populations, you know, because we're the canary in the coal mine, basically. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I like to start with a creamy soft scrub with uh, some baking soda. And, and then it's going to be kind of the consistency of frosting. Um, so, you know, if it's super thick and you can't stir it, to add more um, Castile soap and vegetable glycerin. And so the vegetable glycerin kind of acts as a preservative in this, so, um, which it means that you can store it under your sink for as long as you want, which is great. Um, so do you guys just want to start mixing? We have a uh, one. <laughs> you might need a bigger jar. So that you can get at the co-op, you can get it at the good food store, and um, all of these. So you found Castile soap at the good food store, right, yeah. Bethann? Awesome. It's just their plain, unscented, like, baby safe. Awesome. Mm -hmm. So they have it in bowl. Yeah. Cool. Actually, what if. Is Dr. Bronner? No. No? It just wasn't. Right. You can use Dr. Bronner. It's like mild baby soap is mm -hmm. what it was actually labeled as. Mm -hmm. I just asked him, I was like, I want totally unscented Castile soap. Nice. She's like, here. This okay. um, so actually, now that I'm thinking about it, it may be easier to mix in a couple of big bowls. Yeah. Um, yeah. Sorry, Bethann. No. <laughs> so it's in that slip must just be like in their bulk foods. Like I think it is. Yeah. Laundry detergent maybe? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oily. Mm -hmm. Nice. 
I think so. I was uh, telling Jennifer the other thing about mixing your own cleaning products is that it is so cheap. It's amazingly cheap to go buy all this stuff and you know make a big batch of all-purpose cleaner, a big batch of laundry detergent that'll last you for like a hundred loads. Um, you know, as opposed to you go buy a natural um, cleaning product like Seventh Generation or Method, and it costs more because you know that's kind of the luxury in our society right now is that things that are better for you actually cost more. Um, and so that actually makes it prohibitive for a big part of, you know, the population. Um, and so that's the other benefit to making your own, which is really cool. So um, here's a big bowl for you guys, for yours. So yeah, if you guys want to start with baking soda. Um, washing soda is, um, it has a different um, makeup. And so it does more for, um, I think it is a better surfactant. Whereas baking soda is a good deodorizer, a, uh, also is a natural disinfectant, um, and it is a good whitener also. Where do you get washing soda then? Um, is that in the... the oh, we're on... Um, I know, I know. I oh, yeah. Reading. Oh, yeah. I was like, no, I, I know. <laughs> Shoot. We were, looking, we were looking into making some homemade laundry detergent. I think washing soda, I might be wrong, I think it's sodium carbonate. Okay. I think this is sodium bicarbonate. Okay. And I... I think they sell washing soda. Okay. Under that name, washing soda. Um, but you can find it. The co-op actually has every single thing that you need to make this. Okay. So definitely find the co-op. If not the good food store, they probably have, yeah, have it too. Yeah. Nice. Nice. They actually had a whole green cleaning display out for a while, which we were super excited about. So yeah, you guys could uh, make a double batch maybe and then just divide it. Yeah, we'll just divide it between the three. Yeah. I don't think I've ever really big one. I'm still definitely a little bit. The recipe will make more. Ooh, lemongrass. Nice. Yeah. It's not in the lavender and everything else. Nice. It's just that it should have baking soda. So this is a cup I'm assuming. It should be. Okay. We'll double it. Go ahead. Um, and so sort of the, the other element to cleaning products that we're, um, we just have sort of started working on but have known about the problem for a while, that um, report that's on the table, Disinfectant Overkill, we just published in November. And it's kind of based on the idea that I think more and more you see advertisements for how you're supposed to sanitize every single thing and disinfect. And um, unfortunately, we put it out right when swine flu um, started coming up again. So uh, it was kind of hard to make an argument. But, um, but there just is this sort of like, there's this mantra out there that to be a good mom, you are supposed to disinfect every single thing in your house on a daily basis. Yeah, yeah exactly, exactly. And the problem with that is that those chemicals that are um, antibacterial chemicals were actually developed in clinical settings, you know, to deal with, um, you know, immune system problems and to deal with sterilizing after you're having open heart surgery and that sort of thing. So they're incredibly powerful. And so there's been very little research done onto what everyday exposure to chemicals that are that powerful can do to you. And a lot of them um, are scary. I mean, chlorine bleach is scary just for the fact that it's, um, you know, you can't, if you inhale it, it causes um, lung dermatitis. It causes immediately your eyes water and you start coughing. And those are, you know, the obvious short-term impacts. And some have serious long-term impacts, like they're hormone disruptors and they cause fertility problems. And, and so we released that port report to really say, okay, so that's okay to disinfect and disinfect when someone in your family is sick, but then, you know, disinfect frequently touch surfaces like the doorknob and the light switch and, um, you know, the toilet handle and stuff like that, as opposed to, you know, your child's toy that she or he puts in his mouth every day. Um, but that's why these are also cool because, as I said, they have natural disinfectant properties, so, which are much less harsh. Um, so we do a green cleaning party at the Children's Museum once a year, and this one is always the biggest hit. The downtown one. I haven't been to the Spectrum yet, but I've heard that they're doing some cool new stuff with it. Is this 
It's starting to look like frosting over here. Heck yeah. It's starting to smell like good peppermint frosting. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, like this kind of deceiving me. This is chocolate cupcake. Um, so I was also talking to Jennifer too. I was saying that we are releasing a um, fragrance and cleaners report um, in May. And with the campaign for safe cosmetics, we're releasing just a fragrance report in general on personal care products. Because um, this is the, it's sort of a subject that manufacturers don't want to broach. They don't want to list what's in their fragrances because it's really what distinguishes the product supposedly. And um, and so uh, we were talking about this idea and we're trying to incorporate it into our report and be a really fun outreach tool. Like where did the smell, the idea of clean smelling come from? You know, like when did we decide that clean smelled like a pine forest and you know, yeah. like meadow in spring. Right, yeah. Um, yeah. It would be really gross. Yeah, like I wonder how our our impression of clean was really shaped by the industry. Exactly. You know? Absolutely shaped by the industry. Like, and you know, we were um, kind of looking into this idea of where do like societal mores come from and um, into this idea of the engagement ring and getting on your knee to propose came from De Beers to sell diamonds. Yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, you know, it's very probable that all of our ideas of what, you know, yeah. <laughs> Isn't that funny? Yeah. It's not based on like reality or objective like so exactly just, yeah. Like yeah we're also talking about because parabens are um you know in so many things and we've sort of been trying to come up with new fun ideas for how to engage women on our stuff and we we're talking about this animated cartoon with the parabens as like evil villains named ethyl methyl and whatever all their paraben names are yeah. <laughs> and then like baking soda particles coming out and being the good guys <laughs> Yeah. Flame retardants? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Flame retardants. Um, do you guys do anything with those? We don't directly, but um, an organization that we're the fiscal sponsor of called Clean New York is working a lot on those, and there are actually a lot of organizations working on those because those are also in everything and really, Especially really scary. Baby stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Like yeah. Mattresses and yeah. pajamas. Yeah. And yeah. 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 I figured some poor baby got the worst. Yeah. And then. I can afford, you know, to buy one of those. Yeah. Okay. So then they get $100. Yeah. <laughs> well, the scary thing about flame retardants, too, is that a lot of them are um, bioaccumulative persistent mm -hmm. toxins, which they're like mercury. And so they build up in your body over time and they build up in the food chain. Um, so oh, they're a scary cool. one that you needs to be. Did, like a workshop where you replace like couch cushions or. Oh! You know, something like that, because we were talking about yeah. we wanting to get a rocker glider for the baby, and we were like, oh crap, they probably have bad cushions. Hmm. You know? That <laughs> actually, we, have to redo those. we talked about that our next big campaign might be um, chemicals in clothing or chemicals in furniture. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. I just bought everything used. Yeah, it's like, a good way to do it. The older it is, the less it's going to be off gassing anymore. Right. Yeah. yeah. It's not crazy. So. <laughs> like, even like the changing table, we were thinking about that, and like, well. Yeah, you're really going to build one, you know, I'm like, well, you know, then plywood's got all the formaldehyde off, yeah, so it's like, oh, I have to use, like, real wood. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to take a long time. Straw tech mattress, I mean, there's a reason why I made them. Yeah, like, get some straw, wrap it in, like, have you guys read Having Faith by Sandra yeah. Steingraber? Yeah. She's got some really good lines in that one. Mm -hmm. She's a really great writer. I know, I she's so great. Me too. <laughs> I didn't see her when she was here. I don't actually think I lived here when she was here last five years ago, right? It was a while. Yeah, she came to Rome. No, let's do it. Yeah, there were so many. Oh, let's do it. There were so many people that didn't, you know, that I think would have loved to hear it that didn't show up. Yeah. I mean, at the university, I worked with that. Sure. In close association with toxicology. Oh, you do? Yeah. And so there was no one there. Right. In my whole, I, I thought yeah, I know. if any of these people would have been exposed to it, I know. I know. So I'm really excited. It's amazing. Because it's my family. They don't read a book, you know. Right. They'll watch a documentary. It's much easier. Absolutely. And it's easier just to take in. She did a really good job with making it really accessible. And it's really personal. It follows her battle with cancer. And I don't know how her health is right now, but. Um, yeah, it talks about when she found out that her cancer was coming back and then, um, so it goes kind of between that and then as she's going and talking to people and finding all of these shocking statistics and everything and it was just really well done and we saw an edited version so I bet it's oh, wow. just, yeah, phenomenal. So Yeah, because it's as good as her writing. I mean, her writing is so scientifically accurate yet accessible yeah. and readable. She's, 
Oh, you don't. <laughs> she <laughs> is, um, <laughs> she's actually been called um, the new Rachel Carson. Yeah. Um, and she has written, she's a beautiful, beautiful writer. She writes regularly for Orion Magazine. Um, and she's also a biologist. Um, and so she wrote just two books. I think she's only written two books, but a lot of essays. But she is so good at putting this um, idea of chemicals into this really accessible language where you connect with it and you're like, wow, I do want to be concerned about this. And then she gives you solutions where you're like, oh, I can totally do that. Mm -hmm. So she's, just, she's also a very, very powerful speaker. So you should come on Friday. It's going to be really, really good. How much are tickets? They are um, $8 at Rock and Rudy's or on our website or 10 at the door. And we're also, if any of you are interested, having a VIP reception with her um, beforehand at the Silk Road. Um, and that is 50 each and 40 a pair. So that's more of the fundraiser type part. Nice. Yeah. Um, so are you guys ready to make some um, spray? Yes. It's, not, it's really intense. It's really hard. <laughs> <laughs> it's half vinegar, half water, and as much um, essential oil as you want. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I, I really love the smell of vinegar. <laughs> She will get my big vinegar thing out from under the sink and sit with it on my sofa <laughs> and just like, I have to steal it back from her. Pop it. <laughs> she does it. It's a natural high, too. I don't know. I don't, I don't understand. It's kind of, you know, it's pungent. Mm -hmm. Should we wash these out? I guess we should, or I can do it. I can do it later if you guys want to. Well, should we use this for our next one? Nope, you can do it right in your bottle. Oh, wow. Yeah, because it's that easy. <laughs> Here are labels. Yeah. That's perfect. I totally didn't bring labels. Thank you. Um, but they're also on the Campaign for Safe Cosmetics website if you guys are ever interested in do-it-yourself um, sort of personal care products, which totally work. Um, it's safecosmetics.org, and you can look on there, and there's everything from face masks to lipstick and, yeah. Or if it's, um, do you just have a spray bottle? Um, yeah. Because you can just uh, fill half your spray bottle. And then you don't have to, to measure it. Because <laughs> two cups. <customers. laughs> um, and then, oh, we have plenty. No, I'll just put it in here. Okay. Like, okay. Like, okay. Like, like, still. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> put that on your sandwich. It tastes like peppermint. <laughs> That's a gorgeous label. I love it. <laughs> um, so what do you do in town, Osam? I work at the university in the area health education center. Awesome. So uh, can you bring some people to the film on Friday? Help us fill it up. <laughs> well, well, yeah, my office is only three people, but... <laughs> bring them along. Yeah, I'm sure I'm, I met Grace when I go. Yeah. Oh really? I just yeah. saw them at the union yeah. um, a couple weeks ago. They're so good. Yeah. Um, you know my other favorite one to use is lavender. Yeah. It is expensive. So we are enjoying it, but yeah. 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 Half butter, half vinegar. Two cups of vinegar. Well, just half butter. Oh, okay. Um, in this recipe, if you ever, um, so basically you're supposed to leave to disinfect anything, even with regular commercial products, which I think often, you know, people don't realize this, and very rarely do people read the directions for use anyway. But you're supposed to leave it on for 10 minutes to actually allow it to disinfect and to kill all of those bacteria. Mm -hmm. um, so you do that, and then you can uh, wash it off. And then if you know you still need to cleanse, you spray it again. Um, and if you have a particularly greasy, disgusting job, you can actually microwave this for 20 seconds and get it hot, and it'll be that much more effective. 
And then with this off scrub, I found that if I just leave it on for you know 20, 30 minutes, it is it works amazingly. And all of those uh, fact sheets over there for you guys if you want any or none, no problem. But I also have, if you guys want to, and we'd love it if you did, we have this petition for safe cleaning products here um, that asks all um, our top five targets, which are the big ones, to um, list their ingredients directly on the product label, which is where it helps you the most. Do you guys have any questions about anything? Yeah, um, so we have, there are other great recipes on care2.org. Another one, care2, yeah, um, to like the, the number two. And then there's um, a woman who is a weave supporter, um, and she started this business called Yorganics, which is Y W O R E Ganix. Um, and you can order stuff from her online, and she has a stain remover. Can you say that again? Yorganics, or the Y. <laughs> it's Y O R E Ganix. Dot com? Yeah. Okay. And what was the one where you were saying there were like body care products? Oh, safecosmetics.org. There's another cool website um, if you ever want to look up what's in the personal care products that you already have. Um, it's called the Skin Deep Database, um, and that's also part of the campaign for Safe Cosmetics. And it tells it has it we we've amassed a really great amount, and it gives you a toxicity level of what it is um, from a one to a ten. And you can just go look up what you're using right now or what you want to use and see what's in it. And it tells you what the chemicals of concern are and what they're related to. She is going to be talking about, the film is about um, the connections between um, contamination of you know, air, land, water, everywhere, just our physical environment that we live in, and cancer. Um, and kind of how it hasn't been as publicized as it should be, that, it, you know, that companies are still allowed to manufacture chemicals like this when things like the Love Canal still exist. Um, and it's really, really inspiring. It's really good. So, and then she'll be doing um, a question and answer after the film. So unfortunately, she's only really speaking, speaking at the reception because that was kind of our draw to get people at the reception. But um, she'll intro the film, and then um, she's all over the film, and she'll do a Q and A, and then she'll do a book signing with her brand new edition of Living Downstream after too. So, so she'll be around if you just want to talk to her. So, yeah. Well, if um, you guys don't have any more questions. Um, and our website is um, going to be redesigned right now. It's super confusing, but <laughs> but it's also a good resource if you are ever looking for some info or you want some um, some things to take with you. Like we have a tear off for a campaign for a campaign for safe cosmetic cosmetics tear off that you can put in your wallet that tells you chemicals to watch out for. We have a nail salon wallet card. Um, we have this room by room chart that you can actually see better on how you can uh, use safer cleaning products in each room of your house. Um, so yeah, look at womeninenvironment.org if you would like some resources on that. Thank you guys. Thank you. Thank you.